Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Esther. Welcome back guys to my channel. Yes, your girl is trying to be consistent. She's trying to keep this YouTube journey growing and flourishing by his grace because you know, I've just realized I've actually been so lazy. I've been so lazy with content making. I've been so lazy with my channel. I've been waiting until I'm in the right moods, the right headspace to film, when really and truly, I just need to be diligent, like I said in my last video. And today, I thought I'd really just have like a really nice chit chat, conversational type of video, because, you know, first of all, have you guys noticed that we've changed up our filming? You no longer see books behind me. I'm not in the study anymore. I'm actually in my living room because I wanted to test the lighting and I also wanted to see if it was more of a vibe. And I think I really do prefer filming in my living room, but let me know. Uh, English, I'm always fumbling with my words. Eh? God will help me. Um, let me know in the comments if you guys prefer this filming setup or if you prefer me filming in my study. But anyway, so today's video is going to be more of me really explaining how I came to study the Bible, how I came to really intensely study the Bible and how I became passionate for the word of God because I do have a video like this on my channel where I explain to you guys my past relationship with the bible so if you haven't watched that out you have, if you haven't watched that yet please check it out here but i also wanted to just go back to the beginning go back to the genesis can you see what i'm doing there the genesis of it all because i think it's again it's easy for me to come up and put out a camera and then just automatically make you guys think oh you know I've always loved the Bible. I've always been passionate about the word of God. I've always had a burden to share the word of God. Really and truly, I have it's been little seeds that have been planted over the years that have led me to now and I really thank the Holy Spirit because again, the Holy Spirit is the one that waters over waters over those seeds in order for it to grow and in order for it to flourish. But if you had seen me maybe 2 years ago, three years ago i honestly was not passionate about the bible at all i saw the bible as the most uninteresting thing the most boring thing i saw the bible as daunting i saw the bible as confusing as well like i really didn't understand the entire narrative of the bible i didn't understand what message the bible was communicating or what it was trying to teach me or how i was supposed to apply it to my life i just knew that this bible was important to my christian faith so I thought I would spend this video really talking about how it all began, how it all started and just welcome you guys into my journey because that's what it is. It is a journey. I am not a, at a destination of being a perfect Bible scholar or being the girl that knows everything about the Bible or, you know, spends every waking moment reading the Bible. I like every day looks different for me with my bible study like in the in the season that i'm in now i'm both studying and reading the bible so i'm reading the bible currently doing a bible in one year plan but i'm also studying the letters so i'm also studying ephesians 2 corinthians galatians philippians all the ends as i told my friend because i felt like reading the bible wasn't really it wasn't doing this for me because, you know, I really love studying the Bible and I love picking apart the scriptures and really peeling back the layers because I've, I said before, like the Bible is an onion. You peel back one layer after the other and it just reveals more and more layers. So I decided I was going to study the Bible as well as reading the Bible, which I suggest for anybody as well that you take in the word of God daily, but also study it to show yourself approved, to really equip yourself with the word of God. So let's backtrack a bit. So how did it really all start? Um, if you guys have watched my testimony video, again, I'll link it here. You would know that I have grown up in a Christian household. I have always known the name God. I've always known the being God, but I have not really known God as a father did not know Jesus Christ as my saviour, did not have a relationship with God until the pandemic, basically. So I've grown up in church. My mum has been taking me to church since before I could walk. I always say this. This is how it happens, yeah? I'm starting to know how Jesus felt. I was born and I was put on an altar. 
<laughs> that's literally how I describe my journey with God and how I describe my testimony of coming to Christ. I had no choice. Thank God for my mom because honestly, if she didn't take me to church, I don't think that, I don't know where I would be today, to be honest. I don't know if I would have come to Christ. I mean, I came to Christ by myself, but those, the things that happened in my life, being in church from such a young age planted a seed for me to know him more. If I hadn't had that seed, I don't know what would have happened. But so I've always, always, always been in a church. I've always known God. I've always known what it was to be in a church. But I never had a personal relationship with God until about two to three years ago. When I was 16 years old, again, I said this in my testimony video, I got baptised. Um, I mean, I thought it was about time that I get baptised. I didn't really know what baptism was. I knew that somehow you're going to the water, you come out of the water and there, uh, you're new. That's what I knew. But I didn't really understand the significance of baptism. I didn't know that I was symbolically repeating the act of what Jesus did on the cross when he died and then resurrected three days later. So here's me, 16 years old, with my shower cap and, you know, my clothes. And it was actually one of the first baptisms that my church ever did. And um, just I just remember being baptised by my pastor and then coming out of the water. But then everybody clapping and being like, oh, welcome to your new life. But then within like five minutes, ten minutes, I was like, okay, we've done that now, but what else is new? Like, isn't there something majestic something magical that's supposed to happen within me like am i not supposed to be floating or something honestly guys i did not know what i was doing i did not know what baptism was i just i just i just wanted to do it and my mom didn't stop me because obviously it was my own personal decision to get baptized so then after that a couple of days a couple of weeks a couple of months later nothing really changed with my relationship with god i was still very much the same girl that i was i mean i was going to church every Sunday I was seeing my friends every Sunday I was vibing I was bantering every Sunday but then when I came back home I really didn't understand how to maintain a relationship with God how to really develop a friendship with Christ if I'm being very honest I didn't know who Christ was I I always say this I kind of saw Christianity God um Jesus the cross everything all of these things were titles they were information like facts read off a piece of paper but they weren't like real to me it wasn't truth to me you know the bible says that like the god of this i actually read it today 2 corinthians 4 4 the god of this world has so blinded the minds of unbelievers that they're not able to see the light of the gospel to me because i mean if i'm being very honest i don't really like remember the first time that i gave my life um, as in like the first time I really confessed and really, you know, did the altar call and everything like that. I actually don't remember. I know that it was sometime in junior church or youth church, as we called it in my old church. Um, but I really don't remember the age. I don't remember how it happened. I like, I don't remember any details. So me being baptized at 16, I mean, I thought that made me a believer, but I realized that actually I had to do a prayer of confession and I had to really again as scripture says say it with your mouth and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord that you believed he died on the cross for you and then was raised from the dead three days later but obviously in my head I was like I've already done that I did that in junior church so let me just get baptized so obviously I got baptized but like again nothing had changed so to me reading that scripture 2 Corinthians 4 4 I was thinking to myself like but I'm not really an unbeliever I mean I know God I mean I know what it is I know what I am a Christian like I believe in God I believe there is a supreme being out there I do believe there's a God watching over me and that loves me and cares for me the difference was I did not have a relationship with God and I was still very much part of the world so I guess what you can call it is a lukewarm Christian or kind of like a pick and mix Christian, like I will choose to believe in certain things, but I won't choose to be to believe in other things. So I was very much in and out. One day I was in the world, the next day I was in church, and vice versa. So doing all these things, baptism, really going to church, like all of those were just like a checklist checklist exercise to me. 
again i did not know what it meant to have a relationship with christ i did not know what it meant to establish a relationship with christ or maintain a relationship with christ so i mean years passed i was still doing my routine my routine of waking up on a sunday and going to church and being with my friends and listening to messages i do want to thank my youth church because i do believe that seeds were planted through that youth youth ministry obviously i couldn't see it at the time but now that i am 24 and now that i'm grown i have a relationship with god i can look back and say thank you auntie thank you to my teachers thank you to my uncles for really planting those seeds inside of me i may not have understood then but i do believe that led me to the trajectory that i'm on now so many years passed, I'd, I was starting to prepare to go to uni now. I was 18 slash 19 years old and it was around 2017 that I really started to question what was life? Who am I? Who was I created by? Who is this like Faye What makes her Faye What makes her Esther? Again, I have two names so you guys can call me whatever you want. <laughs> um and i just remember sitting down in my room and really just having an identity crisis and really breaking down thinking that i i literally existed for no reason that i didn't really understand why god wanted me to be in this world why god wanted to be me to be part of this world what was my purpose like who was i made to be i didn't understand any of that and here i am going to university which is supposed to be the most defining years of your lives um, so I sat down on my bedroom floor, had my laptop out and something inside of me, like I know now that that was the Holy Spirit, really prompted me to start writing on my laptop. And that is how my first blog ever came to be. But obviously, even though I knew that somewhere deep down inside of me, I knew that that, that was God, I did not grow to know that voice like i think of it this way i was like samuel like god was calling me from that moment but i kept thinking that oh it's probably just a voice inside of me that i don't know uh is one you know weird experience but i don't know if that's god so you know how samuel kept thinking that it was eli that was speaking to him but it was actually god that was speaking to him and then on the third go he actually said look here i am your servant is here speak to me because Eli had told him actually no it's a lord that's speaking to you i didn't even get to that stage i didn't get to that stage of here i am i'm your servant i know you're speaking to me i didn't even get to the stage of going to my mom or going to any other mentors that i have in my life to ask them oh you know i think god is speaking to me but i don't actually know like could you help me i didn't even go there because frankly i was scared and i didn't understand what was going on so I went to uni with this identity crisis, with some knowing that I was supposed to, you know, write and I was like, I wasn't on this planet by accident. I was here for a purpose, but I didn't flesh it out. I didn't really go on that journey of discovery. So imagine me being an 18, 19 year old in uni. Uni will tell you who you are. Uni will tell you who you are, whether it is the peer pressure it's the uni culture, it's the freedom, it's the independence that will tell you who you are. You really, really, really have to, like one of my youth teachers told me that, look, because of the personality that you have, it's going to be very easy for people to be friends with you. But that doesn't mean you need to let everybody into your life, let everybody into your space. And I took that with a pinch of salt, like it went in one ear, one ear out of the other if I'm being very honest. So going to uni, I was so unsure of who I was that I just acted like everybody else. Again, I was a lukewarm Christian, so I didn't know what it meant to be set apart. I did not know what it meant to be consecrated and to not be of this world, but in this world. So to me, I mean, I'd heard all the stories. I'd heard all the aunties and uncles saying, don't do this, oh, don't drink this, oh, don't go there, oh, but <laughs> come on. <laughs> this is uni, like, nobody's watching me, nobody's looking at me, I even told my mom, like, years later, like, mom, you thought I was at home, yeah, you thought I was sleeping, and, you know, uh, just being a good girl, I wasn't crazy, I didn't do anything too wild, but I definitely experienced temptation, I definitely experienced, um, the world, I would say, I definitely drank, I definitely went clubbing i definitely did all of those things and i'm not ashamed to admit that now as well because again that is part of my story that god is using for his glory so obviously having that identity crisis 
I went through that. I went through the motions of, you know, if I'm being honest, pretending that I was a Christian. Like, I would tell my friends, look, I'm a Christian. I won't do these things, but I would do other things. And they would look at me and be like, okay, cool. We respect your beliefs. We expect that. They would ask me questions. I would answer them. I had Bible verses on my boards that you have in your uni room, but I wasn't reading those Bible verses. I was not applying them to my life. It was just decoration, if I'm going to be honest. I was not going to church in uni. I was watching church sometimes online. Um, I think then we did have an online version of church, but I was not in community. I was not in fellowship. I was very much... I wouldn't say a lone wolf because I had friends, but I was by myself. I was not fellow. I was fellowshipping with the darkness and not with light. So obviously that happened for a couple of years at uni. Um, I would still pray with my mom. I would still, you know, um, you know, act like I knew God. So I would still join different campaigns that church would do. If we were doing 21 days of fasting, that was the first time that I ever fasted at uni. I didn't know what I was doing, but you know, I was like, okay, let me join. It's my church, that type of thing. I tried to read the Bible. I tried to understand the books of the Bible that they were telling me to read, but I wasn't really taking it in. Like nothing was changing me. Nothing was renewing me because at the end of the day, the scriptures, the word of God's, it can't renew you until you once until you denounce your old life until you say i am dead to my flesh i am dead to the world and i want to be alive in god i want to say yes to his spirit i want to say yes to his voice but i was saying maybe to god but yes to the world so that's how my uni experience was until of course you guys have seen my other testimony video of how I discovered God's love for me that in 2018 or just 2019 just before then um during my second year of uni I had a panic attack and I had an anxiety attack and it was so bad that I had to call the hospital it wasn't until then that I woke up <laughs> that I woke up from my deep slumber because something inside of me was telling me that I had to use that anxiety attack I had to use that panic attack to get you out of there because if you were going to stay there you were just going to be consumed by darkness and you would not be able to see my light um obviously looking back at it I didn't know really in that moment what God was saving me from he was saving me from myself and he was saving me from outside influences that were just penetrating me and not adding anything good to my life um now i know that it was literally his hand of mercy taking me away and again using that part of my story for his glory because because of that because of everything that happened with that anxiety attack i failed my exams um <laughs> i lied about failing my exams i lied about going back to uni i practically almost got kicked out of uni um they basically said you cannot graduate with us you cannot come into third year lied about that for months on end to my parents until one day i just said huh, baba mama i have done rubbish tink <laughs> i have really made a big mistake i don't know what i am i don't know who i am i don't know if i'm meant to be a journalist i don't know if i'm meant to be a writer and told them the whole truth and from that day my parents showered me they've always showered me with love they've always sheltered me they've always protected me but i saw my parents in a new light in that way i saw my parents as somebody that were forgiven that had grace for me that had mercy for me that loved me even though i had done all these things like their love for me didn't change in fact i think it even increased for me so i felt safe enough to say I will go back to uni, I felt safe enough to say, you know what, I'm going to finish this course because I do believe, again, taking it back to the moment that I was 19 years old in my bedroom, I do believe that God has called me to do, do these things, to write, to really use my voice and that type of thing. So I went back to uni and I graduated officially last year, but technically in 2021, but because of the pandemic, I had my official graduation last year. In those moments leading up to being to graduating and to you know leaving school i said i have no excuse now i honestly have no excuse i'm isolated i'm away from people i'm away from my friends i'm away from my church friends as well because they were in uni i have a year to myself to revise for these exams and get to know god because at the end of the day 
again i'd been woken up from my deep slumber so i was like no this god is pursuing me this god is chasing after me clearly he wants me as his own he wants me as his daughter so i need to know him i need to know who this god is i cannot keep living my life this way i cannot be a girl that goes to church and then leaves church unchanged and doesn't apply anything that she learns in church to her life on a Monday or on a Tuesday or on a Wednesday throughout the rest of the week. I cannot have the truth staring at me in the faith, in my face, through all the different teachers and all the people in my life and not want to believe and receive that truth. So in that year, I really, really went on the journey and I said, you know what, let's start with the Bible. <laughs> Let's start with the Bible, the Bible that I have been neglecting for so many years, the Bible that I knew famous stories of, the story of Joseph and his technicolor coat, the story of David and Goliath, the story of uh, Daniel and the lion's den. I knew all of those stories, but I did not know the significance of the story of the Bible, which was to really open my eyes to Jesus Christ and to really show me that Jesus has been there from the beginning and he's wanted us from the beginning. He's wanted to redeem us from the beginning. And I actually don't, I think I must have found it on social media or something, but I started really looking up, okay, I need, because the generation that I'm in now, we are very, very reliant on technology and the internet. So I said, you know what, I need to learn about the Bible through this means. Let me use the internet for good for once. And I just looked up the Bible and up came Bible Project. Bible Projects. I'm talking to you. Sponsor me. <laughs> By God's grace. But Bible Project honestly changed my life because they make the bible so accessible they make the bible so relatable they break it down into pieces so that it doesn't seem so daunting so it doesn't look like words on pieces of paper and i just started binge watching the bible project videos from genesis to exodus to leviticus my favorite book to to the books of the new testament all the way to all the way to revelation and you know i would use my ipad to have my headphones in and i would just watch videos i don't even think my mom realized what i was doing because i was literally you know hanging out with her or hanging out with my dad and watching these videos and i was so intrigued because i was like why these books are so interlinked they're so connected i would read something listen to something in one book and I think actually that sounds similar to something in another book so I was trying I was starting to connect the dots and I was trying to really understand what this bible is about and it was just so intriguing that it developed my curiosity it grew the curiosity inside of me so I did that for a couple of months and then I realized actually now that I've read I mean, not right. Now that I've listened to and watched these videos, let me read the Bible for myself. And I got this Bible. So if you guys don't know what this Bible is, watch my Bible collection video. That's a command. That is a command. I'll put it here. But this is the first ever Bible that I got. And it is an amplified um, personal size Bible from Amazon. So I got this Bible and I started in the New Testament started really analyzing the scriptures in the new testament and i didn't really know what i was doing but then i got a notebook and this journal was one of the first ever journals that i used for bible study and i just started to write notes if i'm being very honest i just started to write notes about what i was reading in the bible and asking questions about the text too because again i was curious the more that i read the more that i wanted to read like it was it was like as if something was coming alive in me like a light bulb switch had to click on clicked on i don't know if that makes sense the way i worded that sentence but it was like something came alive in me and i just wanted to know more i started doing bible reading plans like if i look at the first page of this notebook it says bible plan getting closer to god each day and with a bible plan on you version you would have a text and then you would have maybe questions or prompts and then you would be asked to reflect on those questions and i was reading the scripture writing down notes writing down my questions writing down answers to those questions and i didn't realize that everything that i was doing was watering over that seed that had been planted in me from years ago from the moment that i was baptized 
it was now making sense because I was matching the word of God with what I was doing. Because at the end of the day, it says faith comes by hearing the word of God. And now I was actually at that moment where I was hearing the word of God. So I did that for a couple of months. And then I started doing Bible studies with my mom. We studied the book of Esther together, my namesake. And again, I was just writing notes upon notes upon notes upon notes upon notes and i was watching teachings joyce mayer teachings on how to get close to god on how to build intimacy with god on how to read the bible i was watching nia cerise videos on how to fast on the misconceptions of fasting and everything was just making sense to me i was realizing that this walk that i'm supposed to have with god was supposed to change me from the inside out now that i'd given my life to god i had his dna i had his imprint in me i had his spirit dwelling within me and i was not supposed to live according to the world and to its standards i was supposed to live according to him and his standards so i did that for a couple of months and then i had finished my exams the exams that i had to retake because i'd failed them i'd finished my exams and for months, not even months, sorry, for days on end, I kept on hearing, go to the secret place, go to the secret place, go to the secret place, go to the secret place. And I'm thinking to myself, Oga, I'm starting to read your Bible. I'm starting to know you a little bit, but I don't know what the secret place is. I don't have, I haven't gotten <laughs> to that part of the Bible yet. So again, because I've been so accustomed to ignoring god's voice it was very easy for me to downplay what i was hearing so i just thought you know what this is just random i don't know what i'm hearing um this is just weird so i left it and i i didn't i didn't adhere to the voice but on the day that i finished my exams i said you know what god is the one that brought me through these exams so let me praise him let me honor him in helping me bring through bring me through these exams so i said you know what i'm going to do I'm going to worship, I'm going to praise, I'm going to put on some worship music. I put on Transformations Church Day of Worship, which was done during the pandemic. Now, obviously, I was redoing my exams in the pandemic. And again, that voice was in me, go to the secret place, go to the secret place. So I was listening to the worship music and I just, I just felt like going into my bedroom and closing the doors behind me. So I closed the door behind me and I promise you, it didn't take two minutes. It didn't take five minutes. It took like 60 seconds for me to break down in tears and for me to be completely broken and honest with God. It was like my whole life was leading up to that moment. Now, I do want to say this. Not everyone's going to have an encounter like me. Some people may have a more supernatural encounter. I've heard many different stories about how people came to Christ. Some people... It may just be somebody spoke to you and asked if they can pray for you and that was your encounter with God. But for me, this was my encounter. So I was so, I was sobbing. I'm an emotional person, but I don't get emotional during worship. I don't get emotional before God because again, I, I didn't really know him like that. I didn't have a relationship with him like that. But in that moment, I was just so tearful. I was just broken. I was bawling. I was literally bawling. So... I cried and I just said, I am sorry. I am so sorry for how I've turned my back on you. I'm so sorry for saying no to you for so long and not saying yes to you. I'm so sorry that I couldn't, re I didn't realize you were pursuing me, that you were chasing me. You know, the Bible says that he leaves some 99 for the one lost sheep. I didn't know that I was that one lost sheep that he was looking for. I'm so sorry that I didn't treat you like you were the center of my being. I'm so sorry that I was so much more comfortable with my own desires, with my own fleshly pleasure and my own carnal knowledge. But God, forgive me. I want to know you. And that is how I rededicated rededicated my life. So, no, I did not do an altar call. I did not um, get up in front of hundreds of people. I rededicated my life behind closed door as a 22-year-old or 21-year-old. And, yeah, the most transformative experience I've ever, ever, ever felt in my life from that moment i said i want to live my life for you god i want to know who you are i want to live according to your truth and after that moment i couldn't get enough so i said you know what god i'm going to stay with you for seven days for seven days i'm going to be 
behind closed doors, seeking you, reading your word, praying to you, really understanding what you want from me. Because it's clear that you want something from me. You wanted my life. That's how it works as an exchange. Your life for his power, for his glory, for his satisfaction, for his blood. Because he paid the ultimate price on the cross. And then we exchange our lives in return. There's nothing that I can do or say that will ever pay back for what he did but now i know that he wanted me as his daughter so i said i'm gonna stay with you for seven days and that seven days was beautiful it was peaceful it was transformative i gained so much clarity on the things that i was confused about and that is literally how it all began guys that is literally how it all changed from that moment i said this bible is not doing it anymore yes thank you that i started studying the scriptures I started studying Mark again, started studying Matthew because again, I just given my life to Christ. So we dedicated my life to Christ. So I really wanted to know what the gospel was about. I wanted to know what Jesus came to do on this earth when he was in flesh. And I finished using this notebook. I went back, to, I went to this new notebook for the for I know the plans I have for you, Jeremiah 29, 11. This became my Bible study notebook. Um, I have notes about Mark. I have different sermon notes. I just kept going. And then bringing me to 2019, I came to this glorious Bible that my beautiful mother gave me in 2019. And it was a journaling Bible because after reded rededicating my life, I really wanted to grow in what I was now, in what I had now received. So, I mean, I kept seeing it all over my social media because I was starting to follow Christian influencers journaling, like people journaling in the word of God and adding color and doing art and making it look all pretty and i said this is my vibe because i've always been a writer i've always loved studying i've always loved you know just being creative so i said you know what this is what i'm gonna get i'm gonna get a journaling bible and this is the niv single column journaling bible and again i went back i'm just gonna go to the book of matthew so again we're still in the pandemic because the pandemic lasted like two years I went back to the book of Matthew and I started journaling. I started to really understand what it means to have the truth living inside of you. Because at the end of the day, it says heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. So his, his word is eternal. His word is true. His word is sharper than a double-edged sword, judging the thoughts and attitudes of your hearts. And I really wanted to go on this journey of knowing the God of the Bible because I cannot behold something that I do not know. And many of you watching this today are still beholding, beholding an unclear God because you have not picked up your Bible, because you have not read the scriptures, because you have not gone on a personal journey of discovering the scriptures. You have not been like a Barian Jew who heard from Paul and said, you know what, Paul, you're good. I like everything that's coming out of your mouth, but I want to study the scriptures for myself and see God for myself. You haven't gone on that journey yet. And I've been on this journey since 2019 now, intensely. I've been on this journey of really knowing the word of God, of really knowing the narrative of the Bible, of wanting to, uh, honestly, I want to know how to speak Hebrew and Greek so that I can re read the Bible in its original language. Like, that's how passionate that I, I am. And I realise why I, why I was taken away from it for so long is because it was my purpose. Like, the enemy will attack your purpose. So, obviously, being distracted by the world and being away from the truth, which is the Bible... I wasn't going to be able to discover my purpose, which was to really study the Bible and to share the word of God as well, too. Because in those seven days, God told me, I want you to speak about me, like speak about me on a platform, speak about me, um, get out your camera and record yourself and speak about me. And I said, heck to the no. I was really thinking I was disqualified. I was like, no, there's too much in my past. Like, go and use someone else. But I never knew that all these little details, all these little flaws, all these little imperfections of my life over the years were to do this. 
were to be honest with you guys and to share with you guys my journey of how I came to Christ, of how I came to know him and know his truth. So guys, before this video gets any longer, yeah, I hope that makes sense. I hope you enjoyed this video and I do want to keep on having conversations like this, really bringing you in on my journey of how I came to know God and how I came to really love the Bible. Because at the end of the day, I think many of us have just had this misconception about the Bible, that either it's all about us, it's boring, it's outdated, it's ancient, really and truly, the Bible is a story about God and his purpose in the world. And once you know that, then you know your purpose. Then you know who you are. You have to start from there. And I just pray that my videos and the voice that God has given me will lead you to want to know God for yourself. Will lead you to, to search the scriptures for yourself. So guys. I'm going to go now, but please do like, please do comment, please do share, like comment what you learned from this video, comment like how you came to Christ. Um, and please do follow me on TikTok. Please do follow me on Instagram. Thank you for all the love on my Instagram. Um, and I will see you next time. But until then, stay blessed. <laughs>